philosophy uh, we will be discussing about uh, the balance of unit 14 that is impact of globalization on public administration uh, unit 14 impact of globalization on public administration so today <clears throat> i'll be talking about 14.3.3 that is 14 unit point number three sub point three management orientation in public administration management orientation in public administration okay <clears throat> see we were discussing about the public administration it is meant by the government meant for uh, you know for the welfare of a citizen of particular country or state and uh, normally central government is or state government is doing or local self government is doing public administration and how this should be sometimes you know what happens administration is very good and implementation is good sometimes planning is good but implementation implementation is poor okay so planning is also required implementation should also be equally good then only uh, the objective will be, can be achieved okay uh, see public administration traditionally speaking has the major obligation of promoting public interest see i am not a reading sentence i will elaborate wherever required actually see it is pub it should be public interest whatever public administration means it is public See what happened, the government, you know, uh, elected members, uh, elected government is the whoever is ruling the state or the country. And uh, there is, of course, their um, uh, promises or uh, their policies, whatever decision they are taking is being implemented by the bureaucrats. But <laughs> it should reach to the down level. Okay. And people should be, uh, you know, happy. Otherwise, no, a lot of problem. There are, see what happened to some many uh, government schemes are not reaching to the poor people. For your information, I am just telling you, even government, central government is also having a lot of policy. State government is also having a lot of policy. But uh, proper awareness is not the, the ordinary people are not knowing you know what are these policies and uh, they are unable to avail any benefit out of it so it is necessary that the concerned agencies whether it is central whether it is state whether it is local cell government they should at least to try to appraise those benefits to uh, all the people uh, then only it will be you know uh, objective can be achieved right okay now, <clears throat> government should know see, how the government public uh, should be, it is should be performance oriented. Government should be performance oriented, not that promises you know inaugurating many bridges, something, 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 something. We did that, did you did like this, you know? Not that it should be performance oriented. Government, you know, uh, see for example in Kerala there is you know. Flood was there was a flood actually. Afterwards, rebuilding activity, rebuilding Kerala. It was the, so how it to what level they rebuilt, and we don't know. So when we say that that you know that is called performance oriented. Sometimes you know what happened? Though we whatever promises we are making, it has to be fulfilled. Sometimes you know uh, that is you know bureaucrat. With the support of uh, the politician or other people you know they should uh, coordinate proper coordination should be there collective responsibility should be there and uh, uh, you know the uh, you know that whatever you know that uh, i told you now that it should be performance oriented a actually a management has to be deregulated has to be deregulated entrepreneurial okay or uh, then mission driven everybody every government has got certain mission you know a public administration management has to be mission driven entrepreneurial and deregulated deregulated 
say not all rules 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 you know you will not de deviate any of the rule it will be difficult actually whatever when somebody comes to india or kerala for doing investment so whatever you should not see each and every rules strictly sometimes you know certain certain you know genuine consideration has to be given because because you know that type of things uh, generally people expect uh, when they come for uh, investment purpose or whatever it is there are genuine problem which is to be addressed to by the either by the country or the state so uh, i am just, just telling you the uh, here the difficulty in our uh, state actually when they come for investment proper industrial relation atmosphere should be the proper investment environment should be there who has to create that that is to be created by the state government the state government should be very strict because you know uh, controlling all other uh, you know uh, 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 problems uh, which uh, normally faces you know uh, but because a single window entry uh, you know the clearance system and uh, bureaucrats and other uh, officers concerned should be told to assist the people who are coming from abroad or who are it is you know for doing investment but <coughs> unfortunately we are uh, our state is actually very very uh, poor way we are performing reason you think over it what is, what is the reason a yeah, very you know literate state educated people we are all you know going outside the state or abroad or whatever is there we are becoming chief executives of many organizations and we are showing outstanding performance each and every field but problem here one uh, certain one problem i am just telling you investment there is land of course there is the land dispute or whatever is there land is there a shortage of land and other thing but government has to take over excess land if any and they should earmark those land for the purpose of development this is one number two more than this in my practical experience i am just telling you the trade union activities that has to be curtailed because i am having a lot of when day before yesterday i sold one issue in kannu very very flimsy ground people are going on strike something like that <clears throat> okay so without any reason so how the people uh, see certain people what happened and i have seen in techno park trivandrum that um, uh, every year you know they had to give this much money to so and so 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 in during on um, they had to give bonus to the workers why to the worker who which worker those who are not working those who are not working not for the employee who is working in the company they are not getting bonus and for them we have to give bonus and uh, you know for starting any industry we have to give lakhs of rupees sometimes you know to their welfare fund i don't want to elaborate i see i am also a consultant i see even uh, that type of thing should be discouraged irrespective of any political party if you want to improve you know develop your state i am just telling you because i have visited almost all states in the country and one setback here it is like that that proper investment environment should be the pro unnecessary thing you know we should not go you know you are you are fighting for your right but you are not doing your duty sometimes we are so brilliant educated everything but we are becoming experts and brilliant only when we are going outside kerala or flying abroad or something like that why should you utilize your energy your knowledge everything for the welfare of the state this is i am not asking this question but several years ago rajiv gandhi when he visited late rajiv gandhi when he visited alapura for some you know something program he asked this question india is ruled by your malayalis actually delhi if you go ministries everything you know headed by our malayalis actually joint secretary secretary and that secretary this secretary lot of even delhi administration also union territory administration also many 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 states our people are there in public sector undertaking central public sector our people are the top 
But what I mean, they are all experts, renowned personality. But with this type of knowledge, why don't you at least one person you should utilize your energy in your own state to create at least job opportunities for others. One more thing, I am just telling you one more one small uh, example. Why I am telling? See, uh, we are all you know from our uh, people you know are going abroad. Uh, why I am telling? Because coming generation, we should you know at least uh, we should have a vision to produce uh, jobs for the uh, younger generation. How it is? How can it be possible? See, we are going outside for in search of a job that is abroad or something like that we are earning money or sending money to kerala or whatever is there but here one advantage or disadvantage again say that nobody is ready to invest actually the way which we may really uh, you know expect people are not ready to invest not i am a city fund or something like that i am not talking about the bank deposit or something like that. industry so they are not investing that much. So now make a comparison with uh, uh, our, uh, you know, Punjab state. Punjab state. See, Punjab people are going. They are going uh, outside for in search of a job, and they are coming to Punjab, and they are starting some small industry, small scale industry. After they are uh, trying to, and they will give one or two, uh, some few people employment. They will convert uh, subsequently that small scale into medium, medium scale industry. Then the you know gen employment generation will be little higher. Okay, then it will become a large industry. Like that, they set up many industries in Punjab. For for example, Luthiana, Jalandhar, all these places, and they are providing a lot of employment for the people you know they are generating employment whereas we here we are not generating employment the way which we want people because industries are not coming up unless you know industry is not then where we are going to work actually that is also a big question not only that people now but earlier people were going abroad now in abroad abroad also job opportunities are less in other states are also less and uh, i told you last class even some of the states, they are passing the solution that, um, you know, legislation to act, they are bringing that, you know, this much percentage is reserved for their own people like that, 60%, 70%. So the remaining people only will be, a job, uh, job only will be uh, given to others like that. So we should be self-sufficient. We should generate job for that. A collective efforts by all political parties are required the, by forgetting you know their, their differences everything because a large number of people are passing out either graduate or postgraduate so we should provide job to this type of people so let them come up in their life for that we have to do whatever we can yes we definitely we can do there is no problem with adequate support and unnecessary political interference or trade union interference. Otherwise, it is good actually. We are having water, everything, pure air, everything we are having, everything we are having, and knowledge also we are having. Very good people, skilled people are also available. We are producing highly talented person by IM, IIT, or engineering colleges and uh, you know many other academic institutions in the state, and we are fortunately. Kerala is having a lot of universities and uh, various fields, whether it is medical university, whether it is agricultural university, whether it is tribal university, whether it is space or Brahmos or whatever is there in advanced, uh, this, uh, this thing also. We are having lots of institutions and in medical research centers. A lot of opportunities are there. So, collectively, we have to take care of this. Now, uh, so, Management has to be deregulated, entrepreneurial. There should be a mission driven and ambition should be there and service oriented. See, public uh, management is service oriented. See, it is a service that our bureaucrat has to keep in mind. Whatever they are doing, what are salary they are getting, tax pay money, uh, tax pay money, and uh, they have to render service to the people, service oriented. Then, 
sometimes they have to take risk also unless you take risk in your life some you cannot uh, come up sometimes you should not go only safer way also sometimes we have to take risk also suppose if you jump from one organization to another organization sometimes you know it is good sometimes it is bad something but we have to take risk also it will help you sometimes but because what is advantage you know risk when you are taking then you should be altogether you should be a changed person to meet the future challenges so you should have certain quality for taking risk so like that if you do that and uh, you will succeed in your life and uh, always you should not see the safer place actually sometimes you know, when you do some business sometimes loss also sometimes high profit also unless you take risk how can you always you cannot expect profit also no sometimes loss also will be there so this is called business then participation should be there i told you already without active participation by the people and uh, you know not only that bureaucracy if they want to implement any policy and uh, participation should be there uh, you can see very well that you know covid uh, vaccination many other things you know what local self government everybody and whole community participated to make the program really success and uh, another thing rewarding performance here rewarding performance means you know bureaucrats they have to understand the one thing when somebody does a, an outstanding performance they have to reward those people you should not a leader should not take credit you know you are a personal management uh, student the credit should not be taken by the leader why don't you distribute that uh, credit to your subordinates you cannot do anything with the support of your subordinates now i just uh, tell you one thing what a rewarding performance one example is today i am just telling you i was just reading a newspaper rewarding what is rewarding performance see you know in bombay it is there is a place like dharavi which is the largest uh, slum area in all asia several thousands of people are living there i seen that place you know yeah, i was there when i was in bombay i have visited many times and uh, the particular this thing is previously from tamil community from tamil nadu people were there a lot of people were there and uh, they were not having any facilities housing facility drinking water facility road is not there and surrounded by dirty you know this thing uh, sewerage and uh, many other thing dirty waters and other thing in between like an island you know uh, people were, were there and uh, so many you know um, people were you know Uh, they were involved in pickpocket or so many other 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 things and like that some area but and densely populated no it is not like that i am telling you earlier uh, because all type of people were there actually so why why tamil nadu means at that time tamil nadu now it is not from uh, there are many other people also at that time many tamil nadu people very small because what happened you now uh, the uh, houses were built by you know some tent and uh, like that not a uh, permanent building or anything like that you know, poor people you know i'm just telling not one particular state or anything the, but majority was there from tamil nadu now it has changed now it is from some other state okay now what i am telling um, uh, don't think that you know I, we are blaming anybody but the city dharavi is very famous very, very sometimes sometimes earlier 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 some notorious criminals were there at that time okay but one thing why i want to mention here is that it is most densely populated area and slum area biggest slum area in all asia it is near sayan between between sayan station and bandra station of bombay mumbai now mumbai see here what happened the covid was you know started at that time it was really affected because in one room five people were living just single room five people six people seven people were living then uh, and common toilet for, for so many family one toilet uh, one toilet for so like that like that you know but what happened when the covid situation arrived right? these people cannot uh, take uh, lockdown was de- declared you know they cannot go outside they have to sit inside and in one room so many people are there and nearby many 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 other small 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 rooms were con- thickly populated thickly populated very congested and narrow roads and uh, 
like that, like that, like that. You know, old Maharashtra government was so worried because it will explode the situation. You know, will alarming way because it will spread like anything. People suspect that. Now, there was a uh, sub inspector, of, sorry, inspector of police who died yesterday. That's why I'm just telling you. Yesterday he died, not because of COVID. So, station in charge of Dharavi, and uh, he did a marvelous job to evacuate the people to do, you know, I will make awareness and whatever is there to tell the people what to do, not to do. And he very, very, in a, you know, uh, single handedly, he handled the situation. It is a miraculous uh, this thing, and uh, you'll be surprised within limited time, you know. He controlled the situation. In once it happened, there were 71 police personnel in the police station. Out of 71, 70 people affected COVID. Only this police in inspector was controlling the entire police station of 70 people. All 70 people went on, you know, this thing. Uh, you know, uh, you know, for taking, you know, the, uh, to their respective areas and other thing because um, they were affected. Only one person, that is this officer, was controlling the entire police station single-handedly. And uh, COVID situation he controlled. And uh, he, the whole world was watching. And WHO gave a good certificate to Dharavi that you know how they control situation the whole world was watching because it will spread like anything several thousand people were there and but situation became very normal within a limited period and this inspector of police played a vital role to uh, you know control the you know spread of the disease now what happened by seeing his performance the entire community, they, uh, you know, congratulated the police inspector and uh, informed the police, uh, sorry, the government of Maharashtra, that the role rendered by this man. And uh, out of, then what happened? Out of turn basis, home uh, minister of Maharashtra promoted him as assistant commissioner of police bombay okay just one week back just one week back he was promoted out of 20 basis because of his uh, very very significant role and uh, you know he became assistant commissioner of police day before yesterday he was doing morning duty that is up to 6 pm or something like that and afterwards again he has to do night duty so just uh, he was, you know, after one duty, he was doing another duty and uh, he became, you know, uh, something uneasiness or something like that. Not COVID. Not COVID. Though all other people, you know, are affected, but not this police officer. Out of 71, 70 are affected. And uh, he felt uh, uneasiness or something. He went to his house for just uh, nearby police quarters. Uh, went there and uh, immediately asked one glass of water from his wife and suddenly due to heart attack he died at the age of 45 okay so here why i am telling when people some offices or other people does a very an excellent job on behalf of the government we have to suitably reward them so that they, this will be a you know encouragement for other people. They will also try to uh, you know uh, render significant uh, you know meritorious service uh, to the department either to the government or whatever is there. Okay, so suitably it should be rewarded. So performance we have to evaluate. Okay, then another thing we have to get gain a bureaucrat should gain. Public confidence. I don't want to elaborate. I don't want to tell you elaborate. Public confidence should be there. Yes, he's doing correct thing, and uh, you know that confidence you have to 
have among the you know, people you know yes people should be uh, you know they should know that you know this officer is a very very honest and other thing he does a very good uh, you know uh, outstanding job and that public confidence should be there then another thing effectiveness okay no any explanation is required efficiency no explanation is required if there are a uh, lot of people you know in the uh, ias cadre or ips cadre or whatever cadre or irs cadre but only few percentage is really effective that is having confidence among the public and effectiveness and they are showing efficiency maybe there are reason for not showing very efficiency also it is not their fault lot of political interference is also there is not, not there for, but otherwise what happened some people are uh, showing extraordinary this thing uh, you know uh, contribution they are rendering but some people are not uh, uh, like you know, other people you know whether i work or not i will get uh, the civil service scale ugc scale or sorry upsc scale so that now i don't want to uh, displease uh, the politicians or anybody like there are people but some people are very very brilliant people are there, okay now one thing more i just want to tell you wherever you go either in the government central government or private government or whatever government only 10% people 10 to 15% people are working the remaining 85% are like this and remember the entire nation and the state all these departments are the because of the contribution of these 15 people person people only go to secretariat how much percentage of people are working you see over staff okay but secretary is functioning some people are very very loyal and dedicated everywhere you can see whether you, if you go to private company also anywhere it is like that but always have this at least you know uh, in your mind it should be that this is we are getting salary from the tax payer we are supposed to render service to society and the eight hour job means not a time pass and hobby they because we have got lot of responsibility long way to go before we sleep okay okay long way so uh, yeah, when we if you uh, go to your house also sometimes you know this type of work will always there will be there in your mind okay yeah, because how to do how we can help a lot of issues will be there that type of things also will affect uh, us actually so i have also got that type of experience when we are when i was working the central government now here so i told you management has to be deregulated and uh, entrepreneurial mission driven service oriented risk takers participation rewarding performance public confidence effectiveness efficiency okay this is public management so the new reforms model that is uh, uh, new public uh, management uh, is based on certain uh, you know uh, new public management not a traditional public management what are those so they are supposed to render the following services to the people new public management not a traditional one focusing on achieving results if you are having any doubt you can ask me rather than primarily confirming with professor so result oriented achieving result what is um, you should know what is aim and uh, objective what is aim and uh, objective there is one aim then objective i will tell you if somebody is not knowing then i will tell you rama killed ravana rama aim was to kill ravana so rama's aim to kill ravana killed ravana objective achieved killed ravana so you are studying mpa now it is aim you and objective when you get degree certificate for get degree certificate from ignu then only the objective will be there now it is aim you understood the difference this are the you don't think the aim is same objective is same no that is result oriented okay now <clears throat> focusing on achieving result rather than primary conforming with processes introducing market principles 
we so we have to see public management what is uh, the market principle also we have to see that competition we have to see that contracting out uh, certain uh, you know things we have to subcontract to do the subcontract everything the government cannot do that you know small small things you know yeah, so we, we have to do subcontract also yeah because everything government cannot do that you know but railway you see the toilet uh, toilet facility uh, this thing you know uh, uh, waiting hall everything you know that they had given on contract parking everything previously it was not like that it was run by the government actually okay so it is none of the uh, government duty to do this type of things actually drinking water providing drinking water the toilet facility and do so many other things you know so they are giving contract because government should concentrate only in major things okay now another thing make a public administration customer driven public administration you see you go to railway booking and other thing it is customer driven now customer driven there is tajga seva at 8 o'clock they are opening the counter and then what happen if you get reservation if you are not getting the reservation there is tatkal so these are all customer oriented now whether it is food item which is served in railways also your taste basis whether it is vegetarian whether it is non vegetarian but then uh, you see people can uh, even you know you are having money you can go buy rajadhani and uh, you know some other uh, you know big big costly uh, trains and also there is no problem at all the bullet train is starting from uh, bombay to baroda okay and uh, that is also the here as in kerala there is a plan i don't know when it will be materialized we don't know so that is a, that what and this is a customer need so, uh, that is customer driven project okay now you see here uh, you take the example of uh, our uh, this thing uh, Uh, Air Force, uh, sorry, uh, aeroplane, plane. There is business class. There is economic class also. Okay, that is customer driven business class. You know that or top level people will travel in that, and uh, economic class. You know people, uh, you know ordinary people will live, live uh, stay. Work. So these are all customer oriented. Actually, service they are rendering everywhere. It is like that. Okay, now you can see the bus also. sometimes you know we pay more in the facility we are very very it is like that okay now you you know all around the competition is there you have to face the competition the modern world is the world of specialization every where competition is there so uh, if you apply for any suitable job also competition is there several lakhs people are applying for few limited jobs you have to come out of that and you have to you know uh, compete with others the competition spirit should be there nothing is impossible if you are perfect definitely you will get that type of courage should be there then assigning the role of steering activities government rather than more okay then third party deregulating the government act is i already told you empowering the employee see we should empower the people to do certain job we have to not we should not do everything our own we should empower others empowering ladies empowering our staff that you know you do this job and delegating the powers and the jobs and other things to the people so that they will they will be happy you will be happy result will be the then changing the overall public administrative culture the culture has to be changed the what have been government culture is not good traditional you know our british style okay if you, if you go to secretary they also if you go to any government department also that old tradition is that you can see their collector uh, district collector so if there is you know like this you know where you know like uh, our uh, high court or something like that the person who is helping the collector still that old and uh, british time you know we are following that type of things are there so traditional approach still it is going on so here what i am telling administrative culture should be the what is culture administrative culture means result oriented customer and uh, you know uh, relations you know interpersonal interaction interpersonal interaction is missing among the bureaucrats so are they the thing that they go all interpersonal relation is missing that should not be the key okay? they have to interact with the people properly they have to understand the problem of the people properly and they have to resolve those issues properly so they they should not uh, maintain 
distance between you know the ordinary people and uh, bureaucrat so the we have to keep in mind then new public management emerged clearly a major manifestation of competition say that i already told you then market i told you a consensus are gradually building up to create okay uh, a consensus is gradually building up to create cooperation between the state and the market okay what the gun and one what happened here create cooperation between the state and the market you see here now farmers agitation you know that is market oriented you know a uh, new policy central government has introduced so farmers and other things somebody is happy somebody is not happy so three kinds of interventions have been identified which are functional institutional and strategic functional intervention seek to remedy market failures uh, like that prices and other thing okay that just read that okay 1994 some economists in india recommended evolving a paradigm of socially responsible market economy market economy this that is the thing which is going on with this uh, you see the punjab haryana everything market oriented economy okay when you produce something you should get value for that you to, there should be a market to sell it and uh, people should be there to purchase then only the producer will get some benefit out of it otherwise it will be a great loss because the farmers they are producing items by way of taking loan from cooperative societies and when they produce if they are not getting the money then it will be disastrous for them not only that with the result of which many 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 farmers in india committed suicide especially in maharashtra because they became bankrupt they had to repay the loan to the bank and uh, they are unable to get the money out of their products so like they like that so in order to solve this issue new government is introducing many many policies okay that is the thing now civil society and uh, supplementary democratic model civil society which refers to uh, self organization of citizen in contrast to the state or the government is rooted as a, okay that is western model okay now here there are six functions of civil society in shaping democracy there are six function according to larry diamond 1991 larry diamond or the his concept was that there are six function of civil society of shaping democracy you know that democracy each country it is different way okay australia different pakistan different we are different some uh, america is different so democracy means you know uh, are we you know that we have to see how much uh, you know freedom we are having that also we have to uh, concentrate actually now civil society is a reservoir of political economic cultural moral resource so civil society you can see political parties then they are bothered about the economics they are bothered about culture they are they are having moral in society morale everything now another thing is that diversity in civil civil society diversity is the you know some rich people are the uh, poor people are the that caste this caste and so many other religion this religion so many diversity is there in the civil society in one uh, district you can see so many type of people then another thing in the growth of association of life will supplement the work of political parties in stimulating political participation political participation you know we will no explanations are okay civil society will eventually stabilize state because citizen will have a deeper stake in social order citizen they to maintain discipline they to go according to the rules laid down by the government or the constitution okay further while we to respect the ideals you know whatever rules are there that we have to respect now further see you now uh, in the constitution it is said that you have to pay a tax can you say that i will not pay tax no it is a constitutional obligation the tax amount is utilized for the purpose of the development of the country for the development of the country okay so tax is to be remitted law is to uh, whatever law is there that we have to obey uh, because you know if you ask me the red signal is there if you drive a vehicle if the red signal why should i stop i will go no need to stop i will not obey go 
Then what will happen? Same thing. Unless you obey the order, sometimes you know it will be disastrous. Sometimes, okay. So uh, for the nation, you know, growth, a obedient city citizen, patriotism, everything is the case. Human resources are the real asset of a nation. Okay. So now civil society will eventually stabilize state because citizen will have a deeper stake in social order. I told you, civil society is a locus for recruiting new political leadership. In so civil society, you can see so many political parties are there, you know, so many. We are really confused. One person will be in one party in one day. Next day, he will be in some other party. They are having freedom to make any political, can join or make any political uh, this thing as per the constitution of India. Okay. So that is also there. Sometimes it is good for good, it is it, most probably it will be for bad only. Okay. Now, civil society resist because this political party they want power. They want power. Power always, you know, leads to corruption. Power, power, power. Why they are jumping from one party to another? For power. For what is power? Power is, you know, we will they will mint money for five years, you know. They think that they can earn a lot of money out of it. That is the thing. Otherwise, you know, they are uh, rendering honest service to the citizen. This type of, you know, greedy, greediness will not be there. Okay. Now, some people are there till end of my life. Uh, you know, I will remain as, you know, either MLA or MP or whatever is there. That is also their ambition. That is also there. Okay. This type of things you can see in the society. Now, another thing. Civil society, I already told you, emergence of communication movement, which is new. Nowadays, a lot of communication development has taken place, so bureaucrats should exchange the government proposals or whatever is there to the local people for the for so that they will come to know what are the government you know programs and other things. Okay. Because new technology, everything is there, they have to utilize. And uh, it is beyond the doubt that market techniques such as privatization, customer orientation, entrepreneurship. And uh, performance oriented, everything is there. And uh, you see here, one more thing I want to tell you: uh, market. Uh, you know what the government is doing. You can see some mark mark fetch. Uh, there is, you know, they are procuring uh, grains, uh, wheat, rice, everything from the farmers. And this uh, it will be a, a public sector undertaking under the state government. And they will collect everything and afterwards you know, they will just dispose of that. So that the uh, federation, that Mark Fed, uh, here also Kerala, I don't know what type of this thing we are having. Many states are having uh, marketing federation. They will accumulate, uh, collect uh, the greens, whatever, you know, rice with so many other, uh, you know, many other things, you know, sunflower oil or whatever is there, you know, they will collect and afterwards they will sell in the open market and agriculture, the producers will get a suitable money also. So that is the purpose of creating Mark Fed and other federations to help the needy uh, farmers. Now here another problem which I want to tell you that the clash of private interest with the public sector value always one thing is that the private and the government is always there is a clash like a KSRTC bus and private bus there is a clash of private interest and public sector uh, you know you take the airlines there is a clash between Air India sometime then airline then a private other organization Indigo something like that like that like that sometimes they will say they will reduce the rate sometimes they will do something extra facility they will render the competition exists always, you know, uh, rivalry take place sometimes. These type of things are there in the market. This air traffic, I am just telling you, bus, I already told you, and many other areas, of whether it is uh, uh, transmission of electricity, everything, private parties are so involved. Okay, now Bombay city, city like Bombay, private party is supplying Adani, or previously it was Tata. All, you know, Bombay, electricity, everything, you know, uh, supplied by them. But in some other state like Kerala, only Kerala electricity bodies. But in other states, it is not like the private uh, Adani. 
um, uh, all these people are providing this type of power uh, this thing to uh, you know government sector or whatever it is so sometime rivalry take place sometime okay now privatization which is being pursued as a key instrument of globalization now one more thing i which i want to tell you because of the globalization many things you know we have to privatize also because everything government cannot run previously what do you know that uh, uh, pre telephone take uh, previously uh, our uh, bsnl everything was there now it is in so many other uh, competitors have come customers they are having satisfaction that they have they are having choice previously there was no choice because only one party previously only ambassador car was there, there was no choice the only premier patmini or premier uh, automobiles you know they were there was no choice minister they have to purchase only ambassador car now see the private vehicle automobile industries the entire world scenario has changed because new new models are coming so more competition sometimes help the customer and not only to, to get the item in reduced way qualitatively qualitatively also and uh, sometimes you know very best quality will get with the modern amenities modern okay the way which you want you know they will redesign the car the color everything according to needs of you know the people who are going to purchase okay so privatization it is there now peter drucker you know who is peter drucker is the management expert and the management by objective is that concept he developed peter f drucker drucker and uh, he has written many books 39 books it is not there in, the, in your book 39 books he has written and uh, born in austria and he was visiting professor of world renowned universities and many 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 management concepts like uh, you know uh, you know task oriented uh, management culture everything you know he uh, he only introduced management by objectives everything mbo concept he introduced and uh, he was awarded the highest civilian award of uh, usa by president bush so many years back and uh, highest civilian like our bharat ratna and uh, like that in india like that american civilian award highest he got and he died on his birthday on that is 96th birthday you know he died okay and uh, um, a lot of books he has written it is available in the market very good books and uh, some of course there was criticism because that concept he introduced always you know uh, different opinion will be there by other other is this or the task oriented performance oriented like that you know but very good book management expert and visiting professor of many many world renowned university he died okay so we are learning very fast that believe that free free market everything is available in the market you know the transition form now centrally planned to a market previously it was not available this type of things you know now uh, importance of market forces that of course nothing is there now here the uh, effective transport legal judicial regulatory mechanism evolving market friendly firm of state intervention so we have to revise our you know judicial this thing regulatory previously what happened when you were importing when you were exporting items you know a lot of restriction was there and uh, you know uh, license we had to take everything now it has become very 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 easy and the government has simplified the procedure and even filing income tax you know income tax form also they simplified everything you know with the government inter interference intervention they just uh, now ultimate goal of development whether it is uh, pursued by the state or the market is to build human capability so what happen when the market is very safe market is uh, good so then it will have the human as well that is human capability okay because what happen what are they produce they are bringing to the market and they they should uh, get the real product see uh, when i was uh, we were in uh, in bombay and every week you know the farmers will bring uh, the vegetables everything there is a uh, Uh, mandi mandi called the market and uh, they will sell it and they will all the items and the next day they will go to some other place to sell their product so like that what were they were producing they were getting money promptly so government uh, 
has to help, uh, really they used to help them uh, you know they uh, place they uh, you know uh, was certain place was declared as market and the farmers will come there in you know, tractor trolley and the other things and with uh, all uh, vegetables and other thing and people will get on reduced rate okay now <clears throat> so these are the thing now this is brazil okay now um, building synergy between state and society needs appropriate strategies develop a strengthen and sustain collaborative and participatory forces foster institutional development see what happen for the purpose of public administration what our institution we are having we have to develop properly see for suppose for example we are having uh, medical hospital uh, cancer research center for cancer research center should make a lot of development and what are the requirement accordingly equipment has to be purchased you know developmental activities to take place so institution is okay but whether institution is equipped with all facilities or not infrastructure facilities everything so government has to see the institution building then ensure transparency no explanation is required transparency whenever you do something for the state for the public utmost transparency should be there justifiable reason when you purchase procure anything and remember how each money you are spending it is tax based money poor farmers contribution where everybody is paying some way or other tax and other. if you are purchasing one ticket lottery ticket there are also uh, gst everything is there you know when you electricity bill gst is there you know so what happen that type of money so here what i am telling this uh, we have to keep in mind that each and every money we are spending that is public money so transparency has to be maintained whatever we do now then another thing ensure transparency empowerment i already told you delegating the power another setback which i want to tell you is that there is public accountability is not there the bureaucrats the you know i am just telling you uh, whether it is secretary whether it is somebody else you know accountability is lacking they are uh, what is that you know nobody is questioning what they had done performance everything is evaluated by the concerned minister or whatever is there or superior officer that is okay but uh, there is no accountability a is officer what he is doing how his performance is evaluated what type of accountability is having towards the public you know the society that is to be you know that also to be assessed okay then strengthen human capacities okay human capacity so we have to develop the skill of the people human capacity now impact of globalization in developing countries impact now listen carefully because of globalization you know very well the world has become very small if we can import anything export anything and uh, total telecommunication uh, revolution has taken place it revolution has taken place now, but see there are always good and bad okay see the impact of globalization on public administration in developing countries is on several points administration what happened now because of uh, uh, it is you know everybody is doing there is no problem at all each country is having each state is doing each country you know everybody is doing good administration and the modern technology is also helping them to get the feedback from the general public uh, through you know using all computer based or whatever is there you know so the impact of market forces on public services bringing about adverse repercussion adverse the privatization of public enterprises see here i just want to tell you one thing please listen to me very carefully it is not there in the book the privatization of public enterprises especially loss making units are unable to get a suitable buyers and are hence being sold at lower prices there are public sector profit making public sector undertaking there is loss making public sector undertaking but when government wants to sell the loss making organization there are nobody is there to purchase that now for i yeah, can i tell you one example national textile corporation that is i think 25 years back 
or 30 years back, the production was stopped. Because old machinery and uh, it is a government of India undertaking under Ministry of Textile. No technological advancement and no machine is purchased. No, everything textile technology has gone up. New equipment is required. Everything is there. So nothing is done. And uh, so if government wants to sell it, nobody is there to purchase. Only land can be purchased. But whatever is available there, even you will not get one rupee for that. With the equipment, who will purchase? Outdated equipment. 15 years back equipment who will purchase or 25 years back equipment who will purchase it and how to where is the spare parts you know here uh, i am just telling you to certain one even mobile i am just telling you even panasonic i am having a panasonic i am not I'm get, getting space because that factory closed just five years uh, three four years back i purchased and my you know why I am telling, please keep in mind this, the products are changing. When products are changing, spare parts are not available. Uh, because because uh, they will not have any, you know, demand actually, you know. That's why nobody will uh, have the, uh, the thing. same way. Uh, new, new things are coming at that time. Now, if you want, if you are having an ambassador car, if you want a spare part from where you will get the spare parts. The factory closed many years back, Ambassador Car Factory. Same way the scooter also. Not as this scooter, Bajaj scooter or many other things, you know. Many years back it was closed. So this type of things will be there. So here, loss making organization, if government wants to sell it and nobody will be there to purchase. So they have to dispose of that with the lesser rate and government will linger loss. Oh. There are employees working there since for the last 30, 35 years. You have to pay gratuity to them if you want to terminate, if you want to close that factory. Program fund, everything you have to give, huge financial liability also will be there. Okay. Now, uh, but profit making companies also know they want to dispose of all public sector undertaking except in strategy sector. What is strategy? Defi defense and the many other things. You know. That type of thing. So privatization come. Hey, whenever we want to sell it, suitable buyer should be there. Okay, competitive rate, uh, you know, we have to quote. Then privatization come at a cost in the form of, you see, the biggest drawback of privatization is unemployment. Unemployment. See, what happened? I just want to tell you, I don't know why our people are not at all taking seriously this matter. Recently, many, you know, just uh, two, three weeks back also, our Prime Minister, Manki Bath or whatever he told, he want to dispose of all public sector undertaking. Normala Sidara, many months back, when she presented budget, few months back, when she presented budget, he told her that he will, she will dispose of all the uh, public sector undertaking, except in strategy sector, or four or five. At present, we are having 310. So I am just telling you one aspect. Let them do whatever they want. We are not against whatever government they, they are doing. But India is a different country. Lot of unemployment exists. And, uh, and the greatest uh, problem which we are having is unemployment. There is skill shortage as well. There is unemployment as well. Not only in Kerala, it's very good. Recruitment is temporarily suspended in many, many government offices. Railways, post and telegraph, many, I don't want to elaborate. So, recruitment is stopped, but suspended for the time being. Now, kindly imagine if you are selling this into a private company, do you think that? private company will keep all the so-called staff? No. Big no. The first task in front of them will be to reduce the existing manpower. There will be a skeleton staff only. So where the employees will go? They may declare, uh, you know, voluntary VRS or whatever. They may pay some amount or whatever. Then 
you are taking one treatment at the age of 40, 45. What are you going to do after 45 years until 80 years or something, 40 years, how you are going to spend? All are not uh, old people there, you know, in you know, government offices. Many new, newly recruited people, also engineers and other people will be there, no? So, private company, when they will reduce, first task will be reduce the manpower. So, reduce manpower means uh, some people are young, some people are old. So, they will introduce VRS and uh, if they want, they can take it. Uh, otherwise, they will to. They will also transfer them to some backward areas. Some other area like you know Assam, not backward I mean Assam is not a backward, but Assam or some for that means automatically the man should resign. That is the ultimate objective. Mm -hmm. Okay, the if transfer means you know if you are transferring if one person is transferred from one lady is transferred from here to Jammu Kashmir, naturally she will resign. No? So that type of methodology they will adopt, and uh, the employment uh, there is a big question mark about the employment opportunities during the privatization. So you may agree, you may not agree, but I know. And another thing which I want to tell you, think over it. So we are not opposing. Eh? What about, this is not in your book, reservation points. In government, we are doing, providing vacancies for, you know, the third category, SC, ST, OBC, everything, you know, we are, I have physically handicapped or whatever is there, we are giving reservation. Private company is not having any reservation, like IT. Thousands of th three lakh fifty thousand people are working in uh, info uh, uh, DCS. No reservation. Same way, more than two lakhs working in Infosys. No reservation. So private company, then what what how they are going to improve, make improvement of the society. And, uh, you know, uh, only the bright students only will get job, like uh, whether it is, you know, software company or some other company like that, like that, like that. Okay. So this type of setback is that I am not opposing anything. These are the, it is good by selling. The government will, because there are sick uh, law, uh, law making companies. That is the government must be able to pay salary to this type of people. That is uh, either they should, uh, uh, you know, modify the equipment is another thing and uh, whatever, you know, we can revive or whatever is that they should do. Otherwise, they, they have to close or whatever, but not all. They are now selling the highly profit-making public sector and again, like BPCL, Kochi, highly profit-making. And the world, be, I think, bigger, one of the biggest now recently, he only inaugurated Prime Minister, so like that. And uh, that they are going to do this also. The private companies, you know very well, they are commercial way they will run. They want to make profit. For your information, today you see the newspaper, front page, you can see that Mr. Adani has become the first person in the world globally that in one year, his total asset was maximum multiplied by anybody in the world, you know, Gautam Adani. Within one year, that much asset he accumulated. Of course, he's having a lot of industries, power to everything, so many power generation, everything. And he has beaten each and everybody, even Mukesh Ambani, everybody. And this gentleman has become number one in the world that in one year, this much accumulation of wealth. Okay. So what I'm telling, okay, let it be. We, we are not, uh, but what I'm telling the, in private, uh, well, the, I'm talking about employment opportunities. Okay. Other thing, okay, they are doing good thing. Uh, let it be there, uh, running airports on making highways and other things. Okay. Let it be like that. Reactor, uh, you know, all space program, everything, all facilities they are providing. It is okay. Now, see one thing. For the success of democracy, for the development of a country, the government as well as private has to contribute. Don't remember that only government. The you can see the space programs, ISRO, all these things, all material reactors, everything is supplied by Larson and Dubrow. 
which is the biggest engineering firm in the country. So, every private and government should, you know, together they have to work hand in hand. Then only the progress can be made. Whether airport expansion, everything, private participation is there. Any airport you can see that. That type of thing is required for the progress of the country. Okay, now. Uh, situation provides in India where the privatization being faced with a lot of, but here what happened when the, uh, these things are privatized, a lot of resistance is there. See, you know very well, KSRT is a very law making organization. If you want to do the privatize and reduce the number of buses and other things, there is a lot of resistance because of the, the trade union. You know very well. So privatization is, uh, you know, are they opposed by the general people? Okay. Then. Introduction user going to okay. Now, developing countries are yet to arrive at a stage of development. Privatization will not appeal to the citizen unless the cost benefits are carefully. See, privatization, when you do, the cost benefits should be carefully calculate, calculated and demonstrated to the people. When you sell a public sector undertaking or something, the cost benefit analysis that should be known to the people and, you know, it is. Ah, the government, this is owned by the government. So uh, people should know whether government sold this in a, a loss making, a, in a, lo a loss or a profit or whatever is there. Then globalization ha has come to say, uh, the Tony Blair, British uh, Prime Minister, or whatever, that is okay. It is being built that globalization has benefited a few. See, here, one thing more I want to tell you. Globalization has benefited a few. And I don't want to elaborate the thing. Few people they are becoming more richer. Poor remain poor. This under Adani, I think more than five hundred times. More than five hundred. Now it will be six hundred times. He increased his wealth within five six years. Where was it? Today you see the newspaper, no? Why should I tell to you? You see the newspaper. Within five to six years, he increased the total asset. That is more than 500 times. Now see, read this line. Read this line. Globalization has benefited only a few. You understood what I'm telling? So, and the majority, especially developing countries, India is a developing country, continues to live deteriorating levels of poverty. Hello, people have become richer. What are you going to do? What benefit are poor people are going to get? Remember, are they contributing anything for the corporate social responsibility? I don't think. I don't think. Except uh, Tata or some other uh, corporate. And uh, they are they doing eradication of poverty, eradication of illiteracy. These people are doing anything? I don't think. I don't think. They are donating to Chief Minister's Fund, Prime Minister's Fund, everything. That is there. But it is not, uh, it will not go to the poor people. Prime Minister's Fund, everything is going, either natural calamity or whatever is there, and uh, wherever, you know, uh, something happened, you know, unforeseen, this thing, that money is going. But where is the cost, what, are, what type of cost responsibility, social responsibility, sometimes they are doing, we don't know. Okay. So this is mainly due to the increasing powers being exercised by multinational financial institutions like that, like that. Globalization continues to be conducted in the way that it has been passed. If we continue to fail to learn from our mistake, we should learn from our mistake. We will commit mistakes. But we should try to learn from the mistake. Everybody will commit me. Okay, that is the thing. Now, so this is Brazil, WTO, I told you, uh, the pragmatic neoliberal, that is market oriented. Okay, neoliberal. And the globalization process has taught some lesson, positive as well as negative. Globalization means, you know, uh, positive, negative aspects are there. Developing countries, especially to developing countries. They brought to the fore the need to appreciate the significance of indigenous local systems of administration and government. See, very good administration, local administration, state, you know, ad administration, governance is okay. Corporate governance is coming tomorrow. Okay. Governance, very important topic that we will discuss tomorrow. 
so because of globalization the effective control by the state or the country is required otherwise you cannot survive because the competition is ever increasing okay otherwise somebody will take away whatever is there the process of globalization in the context of developing countries has to bring the political economic and for any type of development stability continuity everything should be there a stability of the nation is required very good administration powerful political system in the country should be there to sustain in the present day see india fortunate india is fortunate but you see pakistan you see burma uh, myanmar you see thailand see other country afghanistan stability is not there but we are lucky at least we are having a lot of stability powerful uh, ministry prime minister everybody most admired uh, person and leader everybody is having so india is fortunate to have good uh, political system i is always india was having see not only now india was having earlier also the nehru was also the stability was the nagandhi was the stability was the very well india is fortunate to um, you know have such type of uh, this thing and the, law, the whole world was watching india's democracy see but inside some problem uh, will be there but as a country we are united for country sake we will be united i will forget about other party or whatever it is when nation needs we are there to help that is the beauty of india okay when uh, conflict take place between china and pakistan two time always you know we forgot everything we you know whole heartedly supported the entire nation everybody that the speciality of indian culture okay now concern for global justice and accountability global justice all people enact a prescription and the functions on that is global market ethic then here global market and ethical system when the global market you can sell your rubber product or water product or coffee product or wherever it is wherever you can send there is no problem with it. but ensure quality quantity reliability ethical value everything should be there otherwise the nation's reputation will be affected okay so But you cannot produce anything, any, uh, whether it is you know fish or fruits or whatever is there in a duet. You cannot dump like a Chinese product. But, yeah, but though you are sending, the nation's reputation will be affected. So good quality items you have to produce. Everything we have to export as per the international standard. Uh, that is the uh, that reason why recently you have seen last week uh, the banana, the Andhra Pradesh. from ranavalam uh, they were sending abroad there is a great demand for banana andhra pradesh ne so they they were sending by ship or plane or whatever the huge number of this thing from varakulam uh, or something like that in ranavalam uh, so what happened we are just but you see how they were sending i have seen that the process they are putting in water like that they are packing they have proof uh, something you know the, with so many days are there nothing should happen the quality the color everything they are washing cleaning everything without uh, adding any chemical this thing nothing health will not be nothing is there they have what for thorough investigation everything they are putting in the carton and they just sealing and by taking medical precaution and our beautiful banana is going abroad also and there is a great demand even for pineapple Is it produced in Arunachal maximum? Again, there is a great demand in North India. This pineapple because very sweet and other things, you know, very great demand. So we have to explore this type of market facilities, and we have to uh, run the show, and the government has to support, and we should uh, uh, whatever benefit we are getting, we are getting, we, are, we should share with uh, our farmers so that they will be happy. They will be happy and. Uh, our uh, this thing prosperity will be there generally that okay. there should not be any suicide or whatever is there by our poor farmers they should be happy they should get 
the money for their product, whether it is banana, whether it is coffee, whether it is rubber, whatever is the, that is the ultimate objective. But in Maharashtra, it was very, very tragic and several thousands of farmers died, uh, committed suicide because of because mm -hmm. uh, Sawala and many other things, you know, one rupee. And pro for producing that, they are spending five rupees. And you are there getting one rupee from the market. Even toma, uh, the potato, tomato, whatever is there, you know, they were dumped with them by, because they were disappointed. They, they were just throwing on the road, the milk, everything. They, they were not getting price. So oh, really, really, we cannot see such things. You know, milk is, was flowing on national highways in Karnataka, Maharashtra, everything. Because farmers were disappointed. They were not getting any price. So that is very heartbreaking, this thing, you know. That's all the government has to see each and everything. Okay. Now, uh, I told you, you know, more than 67 people are living in our village. Our, unless we, our village progress nation cannot make any progress. That is Gandhiji's mission. So we should do whatever possible way we, uh, to make a development, a village improvement. That thing. Okay. The global market, I told you. So we have to take adequate care. Ethical system, ethical system, that is principle should be there, not money minded, commercial minded. Quality has to be ensured, quantity has, and timely delivery is also very essential, they will send back. The ethical system also, business ethics, that is also should be there, okay? Then globalization, okay, cultural, okay. Now, yeah. United Nations Development Program, accountability, about accountability we were talking earlier also, and um, verify now. The process of globalization is indeed irreversible, but we need to work towards fighting the apprehension that there is no other alternative to it. It is beyond doubt that globalization has promoted technological advancement. Hello. Do you see previously America, uh, our Russia, UK, China, Japan, some countries were making a lot of progress. You see, because of globalization, we are see, recently rocket launching everything, you know. We just used a, even with the collaboration of Brazil. So many countries are participating. We are also participating in American space program. So world has become very, 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 everywhere, you know, technological, this thing also. Each country is participating and with their support, we are just, uh, uh, you know, Technological advancement also we are making. WTO, I told you, World Trade Organization, I, on the day I already explained. And IMF, I already told you. Okay, then, especially in the developing countries, the, uh, this has serious repercussion, but the most important factor that we needed to take a cognizance is to counter the imbalances. Yes, there will be poor, rich, because of globalization, I told you. The, you know, only limited people are uh, benefited actually, and uh, some people are uh, not uh, that much uh, development has taken place, and uh, social cohesion, and uh, inequality, isolation, imbalance, everything is there. And at most, uh, one more thing which you have to keep in mind when you are globalization, the environment also plays a vital role. To uh, destroy the environment, uh, we should not, you know, produce anything, whether it is pharmaceutical or anything, we should not produce anything to destroy the environmental system. That is also required, actually. Okay. Now, uh, okay, State Morgan, now public administration needs to gear up the following challenges. Redefining the respective space of state and non-state actors, building mechanism for better interaction and cooperation. Now, what happened? Public administration needs to gear up to the challenges of redefining the respective space of state and non-state actors, building mechanism for better interaction and cooperation. Another thing is that framing suitable laws and regulations that provide necessary stability, confidence, enforcement. Stability should be the consistent performance should be there. Next, building a professionalized civil service. Professionalized civil service. Not that only occurring IAS or IPS or I, professional IAS. That is, you know, uh, that is citizen oriented, 
society oriented uh, this thing we uh, should be there that is professional and civil service okay then um, processing civil service competence skill public service participatory and pro citizenry that is professionalized civil service means competence skill public service participatory and a pro citizen ethic okay that that should also be there that is competence competence skills public service participatory and pro citizen ethic this should also be there so uh, now here what i am telling that uh, good governance and an accountable transparent division provision of goods and services the transformation of this type has to be accompanied by a concern of global justice and human development that is whenever you do that is human really we have to see the people who are involved in this because people uh, oriented we after all you know they are the real you know uh, uh, people are uh, uh, should be happy so what are policy you are making it should be uh, you know uh, non to the public and not only that you should consult them in a consultative way you have to take the feedback input from the type of people and do deliver the this thing what are government decision for the now <clears throat> this unity power next we are going to unit 15 15 challenging to traditional bureaucratic paradigm unit 15 challenges to traditional bureaucratic paradigm traditional that is cha challenges to traditional that is unit 15 now state is society and administration has assumed a new role every state now they have got a new role and response see it is changing from each state uh, country the role is changing always because of necessity the goal uh, always you know the world is changing so, uh, always necessity for example you now covid situation is there all over the world the covid vaccination was there immediately you know prime minister sent it to many other countries you know like that we have to cooperate with each other and uh, other countries also helping us in many ways and uh, previously we were having milk powder once upon a time once upon a time milk powder we were importing america was supplying supplying now we are exporting to them we are also providing many 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 things uh, i humanly possible whatever you know we can do everything we are helping uh, we are also providing Uh, help to poor people like somalia sudan sudan and many other countries and uh, our army we are sending our army people also to help uh, un now uh, united nations assignments actually you know the very well that uh, we lost our prime minister rajiv gandhi because we sent that for the uno requirement ipkf to sri lanka okay and uh, our people went there and controlled the tamilian or whatever is there in located in sri lanka and they were unhappy with the result of we something happened in the pirumbudur in tamil nadu and we lost our prime minister also so what i am telling doesn't mean that in all these will happen no but we have to render sorry when we are in need see for, for example there is natural calamity in so many other things you know, other countries are helping us we are also helping so well, suppose nepal or to cake or whatever is there, we help them a lot same way for us other countries are also helping you say many other countries are helping so each other get each other we have to help then only we can uh, that is that is the beauty of see that is the reason for uno wto who whatever is there and they are giving necessary advice to how to uh, equip with ourselves to face the challenges and other things okay this is the thing now now here there are uh, now cricket uh, the, the what, what is that um, say, uh, society society state society and administration have assumed a new role and responsibility in the wake of changes induced by the process of globalization liberalization and privatization that of course you know that you know now state has changed from an administrative state to a cybernetic cybernetic state all you know electronic okay online or whatever is the cyber 
this thing so work everything is like that only you know you, you should not forget one thing that our chief minister early previous oh, umanjandi when he was the chief minister it was you know website uh, everything was there in you know, the secretary chief minister's office and uh, one some you know the person who was not uh, you know something um, mad or some whatever is there you know he went inside the chief minister's uh, office and uh, he occupied a private chief minister's seat when he was attending a cabinet meeting chief minister said and he was you know, some mentally uh, some weak person or something like that but this was noticed by a person who was either in saudi arabia or something like that he noticed that somebody sitting in chief minister's chair and he made a telephone call to the secretary who is sitting in chief minister's seat one man is sitting there kindly go and see hey how our networking system our it everything has developed just see from other country they no observed that someone so person is sitting and they only made a complaint that go and see that that person is going and afterward they went they won when they he so they saw that that person was sitting there so like that you know cybernetic state everywhere you know you, everything is possible nowadays you know so cybernetic state we have, we have become a cybernetic state, state also now the government today we have to work under great pressure emanating from the global reform so that is the reason why our government has to lot of pressure is the because you know uh, the de world demand is also changing lot of uh, you know pressure is also the, for the government actually and you take the example of it see they are also interacting with the foreign company they have got a lot of competition they have got a lot of pressure they have to complete the task within the limited time everything so otherwise the order will go to some other company okay customer satisfaction is very very essential so the role of the administration today is to foster public dialogue collaboration partnership decentralization citizens involvement in day to day government please see the role of administration today is to foster public dialogue collaboration partnership decentralization and citizens involvement in day to day governance these are recommend today okay so changes have been emanated uh, by the approaches of new public administration new public management organizational humanism what is organizational humanism see always when we are uh, strict in uh, you know, admin, uh, doing administration so human touch to this whenever we do always you know humanism the rules are made for the people so humanism is also required new public service okay now okay the quantum uh, bureaucrats have to now adopt the new rules and display flexibility listen bureaucrats now public and while doing admin public administration they have to now adopt new roles and display flexibility openness accountability responsiveness and citizen orientation once again i will repeat now bureaucrats have to now adopt new roles and display flexibility not rigid openness not narrow mindedness accountability accountability response you know reply that you know you have to react and citizen orientation i already told you earlier so the contemporary contra bureaucracy with a special reference in there has been and that is the thing okay now the main features of bureaucracy can be identified as under this is bureaucratic administration characteristic features bureaucratic administration characteristic features now the main features of bureaucracy can be identified as under specialization of task and division of labor for accomplishing goals consistent system of abstract rules of uniformity and uniform rules should be there see somebody one some rule somebody some other rule it should not be there uniform rule 
and coordination also should be there. Hierarchy, principle hierarchy, making accountability. Whenever your responsibility goes up, your accountability also goes up. Hierarchy means, you know, lower level to higher level, higher level to lower level like that. That is hierarchy. Okay. That is, you know, uh, you can see village office, village assistant, village officer, Tasilda, RDO, the deputy collector or joint collector, collector, and director or, you know, deputy secretary or whatever, joint secretary, secretary or principal secretary, whatever it is. Like that, that is called hierarchy. Okay. Now, in person and formal contact, see, uh, there are laid down rules actually, government, you know, government has got uh, each and everything they have got rules. And uh, we are not supposed to violate any of the rules uh, for your selfish interest, actually. For the interest of the people, at least you can deviate subject to the approval of the higher authorities. Okay. I'm not telling you to deviate. But deviation, sometimes it is allowed, but with the approval of a justifiable way. A good thing for the people. So, there is a division of labor, hierarchy. Division of labor means each post. Okay. Division. We are dividing because we, we have to divide this. You have to do engineering. Other people have to do same uh, administration, account, account, material department, and uh, research and development, and quality assurance. Like that, like that, like that. People are we are selecting, and we are you know divisional labor is also taking place. You know, in labor skilled, semi skilled, and skilled labels are the so categorization take place. Hierarchy told, social specified, system rules. Every organization is having rule. Impersonality and rule orientation, neutrality. See, everywhere, a neutrality means, you know, you should not support anybody. You should not oppose anybody. You should be a neutral person. That is called the quality of the administrator. You should be a neutral person because you are appointed for that purpose. Not showing favorism to somebody or opposing somebody. As per rule, Vast is justifiable, do that. No problem. But don't be rigid, sometimes flexible also. Don't be rigid sometimes, you know. A person, is, you are, this thing is only up to 5 o'clock. You are coming at 5.15, sir, I am coming from 45 kilometers away. No, 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 I will accept only 5 o'clock. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, depend upon this thing, flexibility should be there. But there should not be any flexibility in certain cases. Tender document submission. Like that, you know, some time is fixed, but afterwards, afterwards we should not accept that. That is government stipulation. Is there. Other thing, minor things, you know, uh, you come tomorrow, uh, today, 5 o'clock, I will not accept anything. Maybe that person is coming from 45 kilometers away, <laughs> like that, you know. We see some flexibility sometimes, you know. Okay. So the bureaucracy, see, that good thing which you have done will be remembered forever. Small help which you have done will be remembered forever. A bad thing which you had done also will be remembered. So why don't you do good thing? Okay. Now, bureaucrats were not accountable to... Another thing which I want to tell you, you are uh, masters in personal management. When you are doing ma personal management or even you are over as a professional, uh, you know, manager or something, one thing which you have to keep in mind is that uh, if you cannot... Help anybody as per the rules. No problem. But don't harm anybody. You know, you should not harm anybody. If you cannot help, you should tell them this is the problem. We cannot help. But always remember, don't harm anybody. Don't hate anybody. If you hate anybody, a person who really, really hate, that person will be helpful sometime when you are in need. Sometimes your close friend will not help you. Remember, in your life, don't hate anybody. Okay? Because when you are in need, the person who really hates, you know, that person will render help to you. Where it's not your good, 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 good best friend sometimes. So, don't, if you cannot help anybody, don't worry. Tell them, this is the problem, we, I cannot help. I have seen many times, you know, who are, when I was handling recruitment and other things, how many people approach me, told I am, no, I will not do anything. I cannot because, you know, already 
this uh, question will be there and uh, I will get charged it. I cannot do that. This is the problem. I will. So nobody will approach. After all, nobody approached me. Even 27 years, though I did more than 7,500 recruitment in central government posts, nobody approached me with any recommendation because I told them, this is a problem, I cannot help you, whether it is Malayali or anybody, no, it is not uh, possible because this is the problem. Because the government, all are equally competent, all are equally, you know, uh, you know, this thing eligible. So, I merit basis only, we can recruit. Okay, this is our thing. We have to keep in mind. Good things only, I'm just telling you. Okay, wherever you are now, future, kindly keep in mind this type of thing. So, uh, organizational humanism, I told you, feeling of shared interest, bureaucratic organization, but is, okay, whatever is there. Bureaucracy due to permanent, uh, bureaucrats are permanent, you know. I told you on that day. They are, they are having permanent tenor, superior merit, knowledge, professional competence, technical know-how. Bureaucrats are having, see, they are engineers also, they are MBBS also, they are, you know, highly qualified also, not only IAS. So, I am just telling you, the uh, their competence, bureaucrats, their superiority, permanent job, Knowledge and professional competence, technical know-how, experience and expertise has got involved in all aspects of policy cycle. So, they will be happy to make any policy decision without any difficulty. They are enough competent to do so, to formulate any policy for the, for the government. Okay? That is the thing. Okay. Now, another another aspect of that, approaches new, new public administration new public uh, public management, organizational humanism, public service, despite having specific concerns, converge on pertinent theme. The necessity administrators said that they are overpowering. Sometimes what happens administrators, they are having, they are thinking that, you know, bureaucratic way, they are having a lot of powers and other things. So in excess of their power, you know, sometimes they will go beyond their power. That should not be there. Okay. Within the limit only, they have to function. Okay, everybody has got a feeling only to this extent only you can go. Okay, that is the thing. Now, uh, new public administration, I told you, relevant, I told you. Then another aspect which I want to mention, value-based administration. When you do uh, administration, value system should be there. Say, bureaucracy has to be based on norms and values. It cannot be value uh, neutral and follow the methodology of logical positivism. It has to be concerned about the problems of the society and has to be respected democratic value. Value. Bureaucrat means not from, you know, he has just, you know, taken birth for the, this thing, you know, avadaram or something like that. No. He has to respect the society, value systems, everything. And... He should be concerned with the society, the bureaucratic action to be evaluated and judged on the basis of the value. Then, a bureau, bureaucrat should be equity. He should, you know, when they take decisions that, you know, one person, one decision, another person, another decision, that should not be the equality. The equity in decision taking also is the responsibility of the bureaucrat. Bureaucracy has to rise above partisan. Nepotism, autocratism should not be there. Normally, what happened, no? These uh, bureaucrats are having nepotism. There is autocratic style of functioning. You know, if you go to the they are not ready to meet you. You take the appointment and all these things, you know. I don't want to have time. Or this. And they pretend too much uh, that, you know, we are all like uh, slaves, you know, who is coming from Pakistan or China or something like that. That should not be there. Hello? So, bureaucrats, they should help uh, the needy people. They should come out of this ego, this thing. They are having enough ego. Don't worry. They are sometimes, you know, uh, nepotism, that is autocratic style of functioning. Almost all people are having, except few. Okay, that should not be there. They, why, why, why should they forget that uh, their salary, wages, increment, promotion, everything is given by the taxpayer of the beautiful country. If they keep in mind this in, in his mind, you know, this type of autocratic shallow functioning will not be there. 
they are supposed to render service to people okay now bureaucracy has to rise above partisan no part of the no 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 favoritism bureaucracy should not be uh, no favoritism okay then change you have to accept change bureaucrats are functioning like a traditional manner i told you a lot of changes are taking place in the country in the around the world they have to change there should not be resistance to change so uh, that is the thing here they should not status quo oriented like that you know they they will go but uh, always they have to upgrade their skills knowledge and skills in order to improve the excel see what happen when they uh, are working either collector or director or something they have to undergo advanced training ias people advanced training either in the administrative staff college in hyderabad in the institute of personal management sorry sorry in the institute of uh, personal administration public uh, administration then there is also institute in simla so that is also advanced with this thing they have to attend those courses residential program for updating their knowledge what is going on and now it is the current trend everything compulsory residential program they to attend then afterward they to that's why people are going to sometimes you know abroad also for higher education some people are going to other states also it is compulsory because basic thing you should remember whatever knowledge you are having at present is not sufficient to meet the future challenges what are the qualification and knowledge you are having at present is not sufficient to meet the future challenges there is a gap Reca uh, uh, present knowledge and required knowledge there is a gap to fill this gap you have to undergo training that is the reason why when you are joining some organization some sort of training or orientation program the organization is giving every where it is there. so development of vision a bureaucrat should have a vision yes i am the uh, this thing i will do this see, for a take the example of what is vision i will the other thing you read i will see i am just contributing extra vision what is that you take the example of higher education secretary what is his vision not that whatever our uh, um, some our minister is telling minister there are political this thing you know without any sometimes sense also but secretary being a this thing uh, these people are only they want to vote and other thing becoming uh, capturing power and other but bureaucrats has got said responsibility because when uh, suppose higher education the secretary is there he planning is required how to improve the higher education system how the new uh, you know curriculum has to be incorporated in various universities and how the faculty members are to be recruited and in a transparent manner without any you know controversy or whatever is there no back door entry in the academic field which will harm the institute i am telling you because you know only qualified experience very very you know uh, you know you know loyalty towards you know educating you know the students you know that type of thing should be there and uh, purely on merit basis and qualified person should be only be recruited in colleges and other education then only the standard of education will go up the curriculum designing and you know our workshop attendance seminar publication everything is required this is the duty of the higher education council but only council is the uh, only politically appointed council is there. no so it contribute you know what type of things improvement we can do in college administration you will need to do that that is the reason development of a vision i hope i have already explained next uh aggregation of administration structure sometimes reorganizing the structure of the administration okay then another important structure you know administration uh, we have to do some reorganization we have to do that based on needs we have to do some you know this 
uh, you know, uh, merging or, you know, making separate departments or whatever is that, as per the news, you know, that is also the responsibility. No, it is also the responsibility of the Bureau of Health. Next, another important thing which I want to mention here, downsizing the civil administration, civil services. Understand this, downsizing the civil function, civil services. Lot of bureaucrats are there. If this much bureaucrats are required or not, what type of contribution this type of people are making to the society? Well, take the example of RDO is IS, assistant collector is IS, there is IS trainees also, deputy collector is IS, collector is also IS. Now, fortunately, here there is no divisional commissioner. Divisional commissioner is also IS, director is also IS. Then, you know, under secretary, deputy secretary, joint secretary, joint secretary is IAS, additional secretary is IAS, then secretary is IAS, the principal secretary is IAS, chief secretary is IAS. So, each department is having this type of thing. Home, home department, general administration department, so many, so many, so many, so many, both bureaucrats. In addition to this, you will be surprised that these bureaucrats are also appointed as chairman or and managing director of now take the example of Kochi Port Trust. Bina is the she's IAS officer. So they are also appointed in other public sector or autonomous bodies, IAS. Okay, many organizations. Kerala, so today as I have seen what is that one uh, DGP is there, DGP leader. So here also DGP is also appointed a sectional officer or something like that in some sheet metal industries in Southern or like that, three, three. So what happened? How, how many bureaucrats we are having? For what purpose? If ordinary officer has to function, you know, only 25% are working in the whole industry. One DGP, senior most at DGP, actually. DGP, senior most DGP of Kerala. Senior most, number one. Is required to handle 20%. So there is excessive recruitment in IAS cadre, IPS cadre, or whatever is there. There are so many DGPs here in Kerala. Rushira Singh is a DGP. Previously, Sen, uh, what is, what is Sen, he was uh, Jacob George, so many other things, you know. Now our um, Bera and many other people are there. But there is only provision of two DGPs here, one is intelligence and the one is uh, this thing. But so many DGPs are there. For what purpose? What they are doing? One DGP is reporting to another DGP, saying together. What type of loyalty they will show? Egoism. I am the senior. Like that, like that, like that, you know. So here we have to think. <coughs> this, this type of here. So we have to dump. Ah, in addition to the for information, I am just telling you. I don't know you are knowing or not. There is also promotion from state government. Normally, normally IAS is a uni, uh, uh, UPSC selection. Now, Kerala government also, KAS, that is, uh, they are also recruiting. Whoever is senior most, they are also nominating for the IAS Kerala. It's not IAS normally, but nominated uh, to the <coughs> rank of IAS also. So there are many like that. Same way for IPS also, they are nominating. IPS also, they are nominated. So, make so many, you know, like a fish market and so many people are there. For what purpose? Is the cricket for KSRT3, IPS offices or IAS offices, KSRT3? Transport Commission is IAS, KSRT3 is IAS, like that, Managing Director IAS. What is that, actually, you know? Like that, so we have to keep in mind this type of things, actually. And we have to downsize. And how much salary, you know? You'll be shocked that if you hear the salary. Their salary is ranging above 2 lakhs. Okay. 2 lakhs. Plus car, residence, lot of things. Other maybe TA, DE, airfare, everything. 
we have to give. These are all going from <coughs> your pocket. So downsizing the civil service, wherever required it is, it should be there. I am not telling you like that. Wherever required it should be there. But minimize expenditure, you know, unnecessary recruitment and improving the cadre. We want this much. For what purpose? Utilize them properly. If you utilize, no problem. If you are not utilizing, then what is the use? Okay, then. Decentralization of powers, I told you. Service delivery, I told you. Service oriented, this thing. Then, MIS. What is MIS? Just listen, MIS is Management Information System. A management should know uh, what is going on in the particular department. See, for example, Health Ministry. Take the example of Health Department. How, um, you know, doctors, you know, what type of diseases and how the, you know, how many people, you know, COVID situation, how many people total, you know, we recruited, how many people died, how many people are there in the hospital, everything, you know, and um, periodically they have to review for that data is required through computerized the information. Now, home ministry, you take the de uh, home department, every day from every district, important development, the police superintendent has to convey to the DGB. What is going on in different districts? Important thing they didn't make. So they are compiling those information. So MIS means law and order situation, whether it is law and order situation, whether it is food and civil supply or whatever is there, you know, the MIS management information system. So they have to review that and, uh, you know, what are, what is going on, where is the lacuna, they have to rectify it. That is part in organization also. In organization, how it is that? Total production, then cost involved, total manpower deployed, then what are the uh, you know rejections, customer delivery, profit, net profit, tax, bank deposit, and uh, credit, sundry credit, sundry debtors, and many other things, suppliers, vendors, everything they have to do, lead management, then control should be there, then only the smooth operation can be ensured. That is my guess. Then performance was okay, but uh, then humanism, I already told you. Then new public service, demo, democratic citizenship. Democratic citizenship, I told you. This democracy means that uh, democratic citizenship means integrity, fairness, values, honesty, responsiveness, equity, justice, commitment, accountability. Trust, sharing, public interest, leadership, dialogue, participation, collaboration, and empowerment. Democratic citizenship, a yeah, bureaucrat should understand the democratic values of fairness, yeah, fairness, integrity, honesty, responsiveness, equity, justice, commitment, accountability. Trust sharing, trust sharing, that is, you know, exchanging. Public interest, leadership, dialogue, participation, collaboration, and empowerment. I already told you, these are the duty of the public, uh, you know, who are the uh, bureaucrats, okay? Then community approach, society approach, what uh, you are interacting with the, uh, this thing, okay? The network management, you know very well, internet is there, internet is there. That uh, bureaucracy undertake governance like a partnership, interactive policy making, network management. You no, know, one management, another management. Every lot of details are required. No, the networking system is also required. We are only monitoring the things and uh, uh, forwarding the information to the higher authorities by collecting the necessary data. Bureaucracy, uh, hierarchical control in the light of decentralization or so centralized decentralization powers of also the then. Public interest, I already told you. Now, here, bureaucrat has to be a leader. He should be a leader, leading from the front. Public, he, he should be an emissary of public interest and create. Bureaucrat have to create things for dialogue. Everybody has to uh, interact. Then rules and responsibilities are there for the bureaucrat. Then civic education in community interest and community responsibility. Remember, vote, vote, election, everything, COVID situation. He has to educate the people to do how to co vaccine and whatever vaccination, what are the problems and other things, make awareness. And then community feeling. Then 
bureaucrat should be be open accessible and responsive always you know if, if people need open door policy anybody can come and discuss and go that is open door policy and not that you come after 45 days and something like that no come go come go oh, that is open door policy come okay all right what is the problem okay middle so he'll be happy he'll be happy suppose he, the same way if i'm oh yeah i'm busy i am busy busy is yeah it is uh, it is an excuse what is busy you have to plan your priorities time and tide wait for none when you come to office you have to plan your priorities what should be done first what should be done afterwards there is must and there is should immediately what you have to do then that is must the not words what you can do that is should but should also will be, become must afterwards you know this type of thing to plan your priorities and time management is very very essential by a bureaucrat multi dimensional accountability i told you this type of thing i told you that for accountability the accountability means adhere professional standard then prefer values and ethics public legitimacy by adhering to the laws balance uh, public interest what are you do in the public interest only now see vincent and uh, crowther 1998 have put it that public servants are called responsible actors in the complex governance system in which they may play the roles of facilitators reformers interest brokers public relations experts crisis managers hey, when you are having flood landslide everything their crisis management managers also collect everybody their aduke imbo and importantly more leaders and stewards of public interest i already told you then you have to share your responsibility with others also participation should be there partnership should be there consensus consensus building should be there commitment should be there preservance should be there strategic management should be there okay that is the thing and this tool will have also have the bureaucrats to make improvement in their organization by guiding and conditioning the behavior of the employee see you who are working under you you create proper interaction and uh, you know extend help to them and uh, guide them some people can work without guidance some people can work with guidance some people can work with little guidance so help others when you grow you allow others also to grow oru malayalathile oru aal vrksham valliya oru aal vrksham undengil adinte thaale kochu aal vrkshangal varum adini valaran anuvadikku appo valliya maram oru kaalathu veeyanathe cheriya maram adu occupy cheyin thanal kodukum mattulla oru manasile okay appo you should when we are you know you should help others also to grow that is called the quality of the leadership always you know you should not be a hindrance for others to for their growth this thing how do you help them yes you know um, whatever help is required you know provide them they will remember your help forever okay uh, we are all you know we had done like that and the people still suspect us okay and uh, a small help a small help sometimes you know will help uh you know you don't know how much benefit will be there a small help i will tell you what is small help you should know what is small help you don't know the value of help sometimes if that i told you earlier don't hate anybody i told you, you know when you are in need sometimes the other person who was hating he will help you too much i will tell you one reason many years ago many decades ago when i was appearing for a gazetted rank post there was a stenography test that is 180 words per minute once per in bombay bombay no no in punjab 180 words per minute 
uh, you know, there were, were this thing, very senior post. And uh, what happened, uh, Indra was six uh, and uh, one person, one gentleman, who really used to take the money from me, he never used to return. Unless I used to have quarrel with him. I used to pay him back the money, like that, you know, I was <laughs> like, like that. But uh, what really happened? The tomorrow is the test and uh, morning. And you know that? Uh, but test, of course, very crucial for me. And there were a lot of other people also. But there was only one post. And a lot of other people were there. So, really, what happened in the evening? Some chapati, everything, you know, when we were making that time, I was a bachelor or something like that. My hand, you know, unnecessary, you know, just and I kept you know, this thing in the, where, you know, tawa or chapati, where we are making, you know. It is boiled or something like that. So automatically, the, it was really, you know, swelling and other thing to place, burning. You know, the, every finger, you know, it was really big. It has become big. The very next day, lot of problem I face. And the next day morning, this thing was the, I, I was unable to write actually. All fingers were like this, you know. So in 180 words per minute, per minute, I had to write. And uh, I cannot put the finger pencil or something like that in my through my finger or something like that that much pain i was having so five minutes so they nearly 600 words 700 words in five minutes so what happened when five words and you know, they dictated and afterwards and uh, we had to translate that uh, shortened into uh, english so just to translate it. But uh, my friend, you know, with, to whom I was quarreling, <laughs> he was also there to surprise. <laughs> he was reporting to me, but he was a supervisor helping. But what he did, just see, he understood my problem. Remember, I was having a lot of quarrel with him. He understood my problem. So he asked me, uh, what happened? So this is a problem. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry. I will start uh, taking the paper from the last row. I will come to you very late. By that time, whatever is there, you fill up and increase your fees. So he started after five minutes. He started picking up the paper from the first uh, the thing and paper slowly, 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 slowly. He came to me last. By that time, whatever word was omitted, I just uh, just wrote and I typed. You will be surprised to know that the maximum mistake allotted was seven. And I was having seven. You know what is a mistake? In comma, put stop, everything is a mistake. If I put comma here, it is a mistake. Like the maximum allowed, allowed mistake was seven. And I was having seven. So I was selected for the senior post and the credit will go to whom? <laughs> credit will go to that gentleman. That's the reason I'm just telling you. The type of things may happen sometimes in life, you know. So I remembered uh, always his help. And uh, afterwards, I, there was no quarrel or something with him. I remembered his kind help. And, you know, if I uh, was that gentleman didn't help, I would not have got that post also. Then I like that, like that. Anyway. So many people in your career will help you. Sometimes, you know, some way or other. So, a yes, small help, you know, I, what I was telling, a yes, small help. What, is, what was the help? Intro taking the paper, he took the paper from there. So, I got time. He was just one by one, one by one, he was coming. It was a small help. But it was a big help for this either. Okay. Now, the bureaucrats will just be able to develop an intellectual, okay, that is over. Now, let me only five minutes more, five minutes, uh, five to, just a uh, maximum five to ten minutes, that's all. Bureaucrats are no more guided by the See, bureaucrats nowadays, no conventional or traditional norms. Everything is changed. Management philosophy is changed. Globalization, liberalization, everything has completely you now we have to meet the competition and the, the challenges ahead. Okay, to become, you know, a developed state or whatever is there, you know, to provide employment or to provide educational activity, everything. 
So you should be an all rounder. So in decision taking, should be very very sound decision making. You should you should appraise the ministers also the pros and cons and of that. Now see, he should be working decision making should be in the public interest. A bureaucrat now, not individual interest like Shivashankar. Okay, then serving citizen and not just clients and customers. Okay, timeliness. Within the time, within time you have to do, and reliability should be there. Bureaucrat, then responsibility should be there. You have to service delivery should be there. Financial responsibility should be there. Manipulation should not be there. Corruption should not be there. Join partnership with the people, not a centralization. All powers are rest, uh, vested in me. Don't think like that. Okay. Participation with the citizen. You know, that is lacking in bureaucrats. They are not interacting with the employees. They are not interacting with the citizen. The great setback that is to be changed. Then, democratic function, constitutional function, professional values should be, you know, professional value means the water qualification you are having a professional way you do that. That's all. Then, not you have to rule, uh, follow the rules, not sidelining the that is illegal. But within the rule, whatever help you can do, that we can do. The transference, I told you, responsiveness, I told you, then interaction, I told you, then mutual listening. We are very beautiful, you know, we are while talking, we are very smart, but uh, listening ability is lacking. Listening ability is lacking very great setback we should listen to others properly what are their problems okay what are their grievances maybe it is very serious this thing a bureaucrat should have proper listening skill okay that is the thing now leadership i told you civic education not only that you know those who are you know doing wrong thing you know we have to educate them nobody is good nobody is bad so we have to, you know, contribute a lot for our subordinate also. Something, you know, uh, not aware of, we should tell them that you should do like this, you should be like this. Okay? So citizen charter is there. Extra net, internet. Extra net, the accessible to authorized outside is. Extra net, that is, you know, networking system. Extra net means accessible to authorized outside is. Indra net for that is for accessible only to our internal people. That is saying company, members of the saying company. That is the thing. Okay, that is internet. Cybernetic, I already told you. Cybernetic, okay. Now, another thing is MIS. Management information system. The last topic which I am going to discuss is that management information plays a vital role. I am telling you not from the book. I am just telling you again. See, Management, each management has to analyze uh, the insist for MIS from each and every department. A company should get MI, uh, MIS from uh, each department and uh, to consolidate the real M MIS and submit to the board, uh, as, uh, you know, managing director. So managing director will see how much I told you, you know how much production, how much raw material we purchase, how much money inflow, outflow, everything, you know. This periodic review is a prerequisite for the management success. Otherwise, there will not be any control. That is MIA, management information system. Where the money is going, where the surplus money is there. Ah, then another thing, not only this, how many people recruited, how many people resigned. Some man HR manager is telling that uh, uh, some 50 people resigned in the month of uh, February. Oh, this is very serious. How? Oh, what was the reason you to analyze why these people are going? And we have to stop uh, the, you know, uh, how the outlaw of, uh, that is uh, attrition, that is called attrition in a job of uh, this type of people. You know why? Because in, uh, for higher salary or work pressure, so they have to analyze with HR manager why the people are leaving and remedial steps should be taken. 
If they are going under stress, therefore we have to streamline. If they are going for money, uh, for uh, so all the 50 people, uh, then you should understand there is a problem that we are paying less salary. If they are going that our welfare facilities are not okay, so we have to provide some extra incentive or something like that. So then, um, you, uh, the same way, because we, when people are leaving, you have to keep in mind uh, one aspect. Highly trained manpower is leaving your organization. If you recruit a person, new person, it will take one year to leave, learn the organization. So better to restrict the outlaw attrition rates as far as possible. Suppose highly trained people are going, it will affect your smooth operation. I will tell you one thing. In 1989, when I, the ISRO, there was a big blast of this thing. One fire took place. Okay, all planned, everything. Not here. I'm not talking about Trivandra. There. So within five minutes, everything was, you know, completely, you know, devastated. Everything, you know, uh, fire was there. So at that time, Rajiv Gandhi was the prime minister. You should understand what I'm telling. Rajiv Gandhi was the this HR related matter I'm telling. Personal management related matter I'm telling. Masters of personal administration I'm talking. Not that story. Tomorrow you should not say that I'm telling story. No, this is personal management. There was a fire incident which took place at 9 o'clock, everything destroyed. And it took 20 years to rebuild the infrastructure facility in India. So what happened? We were making you know, rocket, the chips and other things, VLA, very large circuit, integrated circuits and other things. We are making for our space program and other things. And, uh, and uh, you know, with the American technology and other things we were making. So what happened? This is okay. This is one part. So at that time, Najee Gandhi was the Prime Minister, K. R. Narayanan was the Minister. K. R. Narayanan was that, you know, that he belongs to Parliamentary in Palaka, Otterpala. So at that time, when the fire took place, he was in Otterpala. So Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister. Immediately after hearing this, Rajiv Gandhi called Narayanan to come, K. R. Narayanan to come to Delhi and visit that, you know, fire uh, that plays, you know, our factory. So came Narayan and came and just addressed all the workers, accomplished, you know, everything was destroyed. The first thing which he told was that you should not worry. Don't, nobody should be allowed, don't go. Uh, it will be, definitely government of India will rebuild this. It will take some time. You can take one year or two year rest. You can sit in your house and we will pay the salary. Even though you should not leave the organization. Same way, one or two years, you know, people were sitting in the house and the government of India was paying salary because all technician, technical assistants, engineers, everybody was highly trained. Some people took a training and everything from abroad also and so many other things. So what happened? Keeping the manpower, the trained manpower intact is the duty of personal manager. Okay? Because they are the real asset of an organization. Not money, not building, not any other infrastructure facilities, human resources. So this is the thing which I want to communicate. So here, let me conclude that bureau, bu bureaucrats, now they had to change the, from traditional approach to new personal management style by understanding the global scenario, competitions around the market trends, market, you know, so many government policies, state government, central government policies, and WTO norms, WHO norms, UNICEF, UNIDO, UNO, many other things like that. You know, our uh, concerned secretary, who is a bureaucrat, he is responsible for implementing that type of policy in the respective state or the country. This is the thing which I want to communicate and tomorrow is a very, very important topic which I'll be talking that, uh, that is corporate governance, you know, good governance. Very important topic which I'm going to take that is tomorrow. So today I completed two uh, units and